And it pay tribute to those who perished. It's also part of efforts to keep the memory of what happened alive. Sadly, Holocaust distortion and denial is on the rise in the United States and Europe. In parts of the Arab world, though, there is a push to really understand what happened. My next guests play a key role in that. His Excellency Ahmed Obaid Al-Mansouri and Eitan Neshtos. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. It's great to have you back with us. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, I'll start with you because uh, you put together the first Holocaust Museum in the Middle East. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, uh, on April 8th, uh, 2021, we have established the first Holocaust uh, gallery uh, in the museum where we have uh, many uh, other galleries that show talks about the Jewish life and uh, the Jews from the Arab world. And what's very important was, was as you mentioned, because the rise of uh, anti-Semitism in the world, especially in the year 2021, was very high. And it was the time, you know, after uh, signing the agreement, uh, to also to uh, get involved in this and try to open uh, a platform to educate people uh, in the area of, uh, you know, about the Holocaust, to counter uh, Holocaust denial, and also to make sure that people, you know, understand it from the right sources, from documents. So it was a, uh, it was very important, and that's step we took it in the UAE, and uh, we have so far commemorated more than eight eight events of uh, Holocaust commemorations. Eitan, uh, why is it important for people in the Arab world to understand something that happened in Europe all those decades ago? Well, today I stood on the stage at Auschwitz to discuss a very important project called Soul to Soul, where Nashloss Foundation, together with Auschwitz Foundation and March of the Living and many generous donors around the world, restored the 8,000 children's shoes at Auschwitz and I had a message to the 10,000 young adults in the audience amongst them Arabs, Israelis, Jews, Muslims, Christian and the message was loud and clear as the young children of today we must stand up more united than ever and we must walk in honor in the shoes of the children of the past and that universal message was very well and very warmly received by everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, you also attended the World Zionist Congress last year. I, I was just wondering, do you get any pushback for your kind of pro-Israel stance? Um, you know, many people have different perspectives. However, uh, what happened, uh, you know, after I came back, uh, the, 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 there, you know, there is a narrative about Zionism in the region. So it, it opened the door to understand it, to, you know, uh, about that, that Zionism and open a conversation in a, in a non biased way about Zionism and uh, for people to learn about it. So uh, I received many questions uh, from people. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy these dialogues because these dialogues, you know, makes us to uh, bring some lights to the table. And, uh, you know, uh, from uh, my perspective, uh, actually, after that and after the Crystal Nacht events, you know, we have more and more participants from the Arab world and our uh, museums and uh, about the Holocaust and uh, and about the letter of Zionism. We have it since 2014 uh, in the museum and nobody objected it. However, my participation uh, is sure that there is a side. I have taken a declaration of side. Secondly, it, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, for me, was, was the message we should be open to uh, to read and to understand more than instead of just, uh, you know, uh, inheriting certain narratives and uh, not being beyond that. All right. Uh, Your Excellency Ahmed Obaid Al-Mansouri and Eitan Naishos, uh, great work you're doing there on this Yom HaShoah. Thank you very much indeed. We appreciate you coming to talk to us today. Thanks.